The East India Company College, or East India College, was an educational establishment situated at Hayley, Hertfordshire, 19 miles north of London founded in 1806 to train writers administrators for the Honourable East India Company HEIC. It provided general and vocational education for young gentlemen of 16 to 18 years old, who were nominated by the company's directors to writerships in its overseas civil service. The college's counterpart for the training of officers for the company's presidency armies was Addiscombe Military Seminary, Surrey. The buildings are now occupied by Haleybury and Imperial Service College. Topic: History. Charles Grant, chairman of the British East India Company and member of Parliament, was closely involved in the foundation of the college. It was first located in Hertford Castle but it was evident that a purpose-built seat of learning would be more suitable and in October 1805 the company purchased an estate just outside Hertford Heath for the sum of £5,930 for this objective. The foundation stone of the new buildings were laid on 12 May 1806. The buildings cost the East India Company £92,000 at the time of their erection to the designs of the architect William Wilkins who later designed the National Gallery in London. The grounds were landscaped by Humphrey Repton, his most notable work here being the terraced area to the front of Wilkins' main range and ponds to the west of this. Repton submitted his final account for work undertaken here just eight days before a carriage accident which left him crippled. The new buildings were occupied by students in 1809. The East India Company had been incorporated in 1600 as a commercial entity. For 200 years its administrators had been recruited, largely by patronage, to oversee commercial transactions in Asia. By 1800 they had become the de facto government for millions of people in those areas, but without much training for the role. The college was intended to address these shortcomings. In 50 years it trained over 2,000 so-called writers to administer the Indian subcontinent. The curriculum was wide, detailed, and targeted to the career responsibilities. It included political economy, history, mathematics, natural philosophy, classics, law and humanity and philology. Languages included Arabic, Urdu, Hindustani, Bengali, Marathi, Sanskrit, Telugu and Persian. Among the tutors were some of the finest minds of the day, many from Oxford and Cambridge, with lavish annual salaries as much as £500. The college was customarily referred to as Haleybury. In contemporary accounts, debates in the House of Lords and the House of Commons and by the administrators of the East India Company and the Colonial Civil Service. From 1839 the college had a journal known as the Haleybury Observer. The East India Company itself was seen as too powerful. There was pressure for meritocracy to replace recruitment by patronage. Graduates of universities in Great Britain should have the chance to serve in India, without needing to pass through the college. In 1855, Parliament passed an act to relieve the East India Company from the obligation to maintain the college at Haleybury." King's College, London, hosted the first open competitive examinations for appointment to the Indian Civil Service. <laughs> Closure and later use of buildings 
In the aftermath of the Indian Rebellion of 1857, and in anticipation of the winding up of the affairs of the East India Company itself, the college was closed in January 1858. For a brief period the buildings became a military depot for troops destined for India. During this interregnum the college's master, Rev. Henry Melville, and registrar, Rev. James William Lucas Heaviside, continued to live in their residences on the site and oversaw the maintenance of the buildings. The leading Hertford publisher Stephen Austin, who had been the official printer to the East India Company's college and thus become one of the leading printers of books in various Oriental languages, led a campaign to ensure the buildings were returned to some sort of academic purpose and the college ultimately reopened as the public school Haleybury in 1862, formally constituted by royal charter on August 30, 1864. During the Victorian era the difference between the two periods of education on the site were referred to as «Old Haleybury» and «New Haleybury». In its early years the new school retained close links to those involved in colonial administration and it would ultimately merge with the Imperial Service College in 1942 to become Haleybury and Imperial Service College. Topic: Administrators. Topic: Principals. The college had four principals. 1806 to 1815, Samuel Henley. 1815 to 1837, Joseph Batten. 1837 to 1843 Charles Webb Labaugh 1844 to 1858 Henry Melville afterwards canon of St Paul's Topic <laughs> Deans The position of dean was filled by one of the professors 1813, William Deltry, M.A. 1814–1838, Charles Webb Labaugh, M.A. 1838–1850, James Amaro Jeremy, Professor of Classics 1850–1857, W.E. Buckley Registrars The position of registrar was filled by one of the professors 1813, William Deltry 1814–1816, Bevick Bridge 1816–1830, Edward Luton 1831–1834, Henry George Keane 1834 to 1837, James Michael. 1838 to 1857, Fred Smith. Topic: Professors. Topic: Languages. Graves Chamney Houghton 1817 to 27 FRS previously of Fort William College Calcutta Francis Johnson taught Sanskrit Bengali and Telugu 1824 to 55 Mirza Muhammad Ibrahim a Persian held a permanent appointment as a professor of Arabic and Persian 1826 to 44 Monier Monier Williams, whose Sanskrit dictionary is still in print, taught Sanskrit, Bengali and Telugu 1844-58. Edward Backhouse Eastwick was professor of Urdu Hindustani, Hindi and Marathi 1845-57. Major J. W. J. Uzali, 
professor of Persian and Arabic, previously professor of the Arabic and Persian languages in the College of Fort William, Calcutta, 1844 to 57. Topic: Law. Edward Christian, 1806 to 18. James McIntosh was Professor of Law and General Politics 1818–24. William Empson, was Professor of Law 1824–52. John Farley Leith Q.C. later Member of Parliament for Aberdeen. Political economy. Thomas Malthus taught from 1805 to 34. Richard Jones was professor of history and political economy 1834 to 55. The Right Honorable Sir James Stephen also taught political economy 1855 to 57. Topic Mathematics and Natural Philosophy William Deltry was Professor of Mathematics 1806–13. He had been Second Wrangler in 1796. Bevick Bridge was Professor of Mathematics 1806–16. Charles Webb Le Bas, 1813 to 37. Charles Babbage applied unsuccessfully for a job in 1816. Henry Walter, 1816 to 30. William Sturgeon lectured on science in 1824. Frederick Smith, 1831 to 50, of Peterhouse College, Cambridge. J. W. L. Heaviside, 1838–57, previously of Trinity College, and then Sydney Sussex College, Cambridge, where he graduated second wrangler and a Smith's Prize winner in 1830, and tutored until he moved to Haleybury. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Classical and general literature. Edward Luton, 1806 to 30. Joseph Hallett Batten, 1806 to 15. James Amaro Jeremy, also Dean, 1830 to 50, elected in 1850 Regius Professor of Divinity at Cambridge. W. E. Buckley, 1850 to 57, previously tutor and fellow at Brasenos College, Oxford, and professor of Anglo-Saxon at Oxford, 1844 to 50, and a member and subsequently vice president of the Roxburgh Club. Topic: Other. Henry George Keane, who served at the Battle of Seringapatam with the first Lord Harris his uncle, and whose American wife, though she came of a New England family, was related to Lord Cornwallis. His son became a Fellow of the University of Calcutta and a prolific writer. Horace Heyman Wilson, examiner in Sanskrit 1837 assistants in the Oriental Department included Malavi Abdal Ali 1809 Malavi Mirza Cadell 1809 the Rev. Robert Anderson 1820 and David Shea 1826 Munshi Ghulam Haider and Thomas Medlin taught Oriental writing. Notable alumni Sir Edward Colebrook, 4th Baronet John Russell Colvin Ashley Eden Henry Bartle Frere John Peter Grant Sir John Lawrence 
Charles Merivale, Monier Monier Williams, John Muir, Indologist, Sir William Muir, Richard Paternoster, Charles Pelham Villiers, Sir Richard Temple, First Baronet, Charles Trevelyan, Charles John Wingfield, Alan Octavian Hume.